I just got done watching Star Wars Vision Season 2 early, and this is going to be my non-spoiler review for every single episode as we break down all nine episodes for this season. I'm very excited because the first season I thought was incredible. Not perfect, but incredible in a lot of different lights, and I love how it shined a light into the medium of animation and what animation for Star Wars and how important that really is because if you've ever watched any of the countless Star Wars animated shows out there, whether it's Rebels, whether it's the first version of Clone Wars that Travowski did, or maybe it's the actual version that's canon to Star Wars. There's so many different versions of animation when it comes down to Star Wars, and I love that the first season of Visions focused primarily on anime. Like, it literally was anime to its extent, and Visions, while it does still have some anime to it, it very much is all mediums of animation. They had so many different studios jump in this time around, and I gotta say that Vision Season 2 does not disappoint. And I think it's better in some ways than the first season. In other ways, it, you know, it's just as good. And I think that's kind of the ways that I walked away going, yeah, this was just as good as the first season. And fans of animation are going to be very excited for this. The way that the series review is going to break down is that we have nine episodes to talk about. I wrote notes for each and every one. We're going to break them down, go through them one by one. And then I'm going to give you guys my overviewing thoughts for what I thought for Season 2 of Visions. Overall, I very much highly recommend that you check this out. None of these will have spoilers. I'm pretty much just going to talk about the gist of the story. And most of these range from 11 minutes to, I think, 18 or 19 minutes being the longest episode of the series. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below, specifically if the force is with you. And also make sure to hit that like and subscribe. And if you enjoy content like this on a daily basis, I love talking movies. I love talking TV. I'm a giant Star Wars fan. And if you are all of those or one of those in particular, you are certainly in the right place. So without further ado, let's dive into this. And overall, we're jumping into the first episode which is from the El Guerrero El Guerrero studio I'm not good at pronouncing this just understand but the title is called just Sith and first off it opens up with a cute little droid I was all for that but the backdrop and the animation for this is actually very much Spider-Verse and Puss in Boots to the Last Wish like so I was already like instantly into the vibe of this entire set and for this episode to kick off Visions I thought it was a phenomenal one at that it's actually one of my favorites and I love how the usage of cinema in here like specifically I'm a big fan of like when ratio changes from like widescreen to full screen you get that a lot within IMAX and primarily one of the most common films that I think I've seen that lately in was like Dune or even Hunger Games Catching Fire which was phenomenal to say the least. The image of that animation is actually some of the most uniqueness to it all and I love the designs of what they do with the droid and specifically the main character we follow along and the way that they made everything like a canvas like when you look at this it's like really white and bright and the usage of paint and the way that the the main character kind of brings that art to life and really much the basics of this all and no pun intended specifically by the time you see the end of this it's a painting come to life in the best way to express this episode and seeing a character who had left the sith at one point and what they are trying to do to move forward in their life of course you get some sith action in there and the lightsaber duel in here is one of my favorites in all of the visions. Just like how the Samurai episode opened up Season 1, this was an excellent episode to open up Season 2, and I gave this one a 9 out of 10. I thought it was brilliant. Up next, we have Cartoon Saloon's Screech's Reach. Now, this one is from the animation from Wolf Walkers or any of those kind of folktale animated stories. They've made countless films that I have loved each and every one of them pretty much. They grow on rewatches. I'm a major fan of this studio. And I actually didn't know that they were doing something in this. So the second it popped up, I'm like, that sounds familiar. And then I went and looked up. I'm like, Cartoon Saloon? Okay. So first off, this is a very much, it's, st it's stunning 2D animation. And it's very much in the same vein of any of their films that you've ever seen. Specifically, one of the ones that many people people are known for now is wolf walkers if you still have not seen that film highly recommend it but the best way to describe this one is it's a folklore in the star wars universe and what happens if you got mix that with a ghost story for a small village of kids who have this ghost story about this mountain when they go there what if there actually is a ghost how does that primarily go into there and how does that affect their life the elements of kind of the Sith and the way that they kind of relevate that to horror, the way that you kind of relevate the Sith to, of course, folktale and how that affects people and how folktales in a lot of different origins and mythology is super unique and interesting to kind of dive into. In Cartoon Saloon, almost each and every one of their films always feels like a folktale. So 
I love this one. The less you know, the better, specifically by the end. I gave this one a 9 out of 10 as well. I thought this was a brilliant piece, and I think the Cartoon Saloon did an amazing job with this one. Up next, Punk Robot has In the Stars. Now, this one was kind of a mix of animation, claymation, this very unique style. It's not full-on claymation at times, but it does feel like it. And this one just has a great usage of direction and storytelling. And I like how each episode kind of builds off the last, and specifically with what they were trying to do. So whether the last one was like a folktale, this one kind of plays more into that, but more into the central of the world of what the Empire destroyed and how it destroyed communities and in general these these planets. Like it kind of talks about pollution and deforestation and everything of that nature. And I really love the storytelling devices in here. Now, the importance of this all is family and still being with one another. And I found that this one started off a little bit slow. But as it kind of started diving into the backstory, I'm like, okay, this is unique. But within the last six, seven minutes, that's where the story really comes together. And the finale, the score, the usage of TIE Fighters and ATSTs are phenomenal. I really love the relationship between the two main characters in here. There's a lot of coolness in here, and I loved it. And one thing you're going to hear me start to talk about a lot is how a lot of these animation studios, where whether you go and look at where they are centrally located at, what I loved about this season of Visions is how it really focused in on each area of those seasons and those studios and what culture they are from and the way that those cultures actually really come out and infuse within the animation. It was brilliant to say the least. Episode number three, I gave an 8.5 out of 10 to. Up next, we have actually the one that I was most excited for because I knew Ardman, who had made like Chicken Run and Wallace and Gromit, were going to be doing a Star Wars Visions one. And this one's title was I Am Your Mother, which... Okay, so like it's very on the nose with what they are doing. And first off, it has a great Easter egg to Wedge and Tilly's in there. Not really too much of a big piece, but this is straight clay animation. And I thought it was freaking cool and sweet. And this one was out of all of them, the most kid friendly out of them, humor wise, especially. And I think for Ardman fans, you're going to get a lot more out of this than particularly people who maybe are not Ardman fans. I'm a fan of Ardman, so I enjoyed this one for what it was. Was it the most best one out of here? No, it probably is one of my more least favorites, but as someone who does love Ardman, I love that they got to play it around in the Star Wars universe, and I like that this one's kind of like a great, like, Mother's Day story, in a sense. Like, you could show your mother's this on Mother's Day, and you'd probably really appreciate it, specifically about what it has to say about family and relationships itself. When I ended up giving an 8 out of 10 to. Now we get into the longest one yet, and this is from Studio Mir, who titled this Journey to the Dark Head. Now, flat out, this is the one that is straight up anime in every sort of way. The best way I actually compared this to is it kind of reminded me, and this is for my Naruto fans, it reminded me, partially in parts, if you remember when Itachi killed the Uchiha clan in Naruto. That's exactly what this episode reminded me of at times. And whether it was from the animation to how this one is primarily all Japanese language focused, which I loved. And this one has like, probably the baddest ass lightsaber fight out of all these it's the longest one yet like i said i didn't find that the story was that strong throughout the entire thing but i will say is that like the action in here the animation everything in here that i truly came for was top not. And I love the usage of watercolors primarily in some of the flashback sequences within the early start of this episode, but this episode just builds and builds and builds. And while again, I wish the story dove a little bit deeper, like I think if this episode was at least like five minutes longer, it could have been even stronger. But this is the type of stuff that I start to talk about where I wish Star Wars would just let these episodes get their entire full season. There was another anime inspired one that was heavily like this in the last season, and I wish for the same thing thing and this one was just great i just wanted more from it and for this one i gave an 8.5 out of 10 too next one we have is from studio la chata which this one is titled the spy dancer now this one was quite unique because the animation kind of felt right out of sight of like a newspaper comic strip which is very weird to say but i used to read a ton of those as a kid and i found that this one was unique it kind of opens up these stormtroopers are going to this bar there's a show going to be happening but what happens is that there's actually a spark for the rebellion here these people who are performing in this bar are actually actually like putting trackers on all the stormtroopers there but what happens when ptsd starts to affect you and you start to see why are these people actually getting involved with the rebellion and what is making them go against the empire itself there is an incredible action sequence in here and i love 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 the aspect of showing what people in the rebellion personally go to 
and there is like one little element that they have in here. There's one droid on the Empire side that when it pops up, I was like, hell yes, this is going to be great. This episode just got better and better as it went on. Same thing as the last one, 8.5 out of 10. I wish this one was a little bit longer. I have a short from 88 Pictures, and this one's called The Bandits of Golik. Now, this one feels very Clone Wars animation mixed with Rebels, but it's a little bit more detailed in certain areas, specifically primarily in the faces. And what I like from this one is that this animation department, from my understanding, very much infused the India culture into here and a very big Western aspect to it all. And I love, just as a shout out, I saw that the studio had actually made the VeggieTales remake like a couple years back. I love the VeggieTales as a kid, so... That was cool. This one like totally just goes in a completely different direction. It's the wild, wild west with the inquisitors and stormtroopers hunting down two different people. The way that it builds up and kind of seeing how young force wielders were having to hide in here. And I love how they had to hide them. But the entire finale is actually what the peak of this entire story is. And the way that it actually sent slowly builds up to that is actually what made me start to fall more and more in love with this episode. And primarily when it gets to the final duel in here, that is just peak Star Wars. It is a revelation of its own. It is so badass, and the the reveal of it all was fantastic. Uh, this one I gave a 9 out of 10 to. I think a lot of you guys are going to be in store for a great time with this one. Up next, we have D-Art Shitado and Lucasfilm made The Pit. Now, this one I actually think is the thematically the darkest one out of them all, and specifically how it shows the Empire's usage of people in the way of slavery. And it really is disgusting, to say the least, the way that they are treating people and the way of, that they use the thematics of hopefulness and also how they touch on the kyber crystals during this era i thought was one of the most poignant things in all of star wars this episode by the very end i actually felt emotionally invested the only thing again i wish this episode was longer this is an episode i think that would have furthered and developed and been stronger if it was at least 10 minutes longer there's a lot of elements in there that i wish they would have focused on primarily with this family that it does but again thematically this episode is very strong that's why i gave this one an 8.5 out of 10 and i think i just forgot the other one before this i gave a 9 out of 10 to last but not least we have triggerfish making ayo's song now i probably again mispronounce that some of these words are just too damn hard for me to mispronounce but i like how this one opened up with an opening credits but I do have to be honest, this one was my least favorite of the entire season. Same with like season one. I thought the last episode was also my least favorite out of all of them. Now, this one has a cute score to it. And in a way, it kind of reminds me of like a Studio Ghibli film where they're just kind of messing around and hanging out. And the animation is easily the most vibrant. This is the most well-colored one. I do think coming off the last one, which focused on the hopefulness of Kyber Crystals, this one actually focuses on the more spiritual aspects of it all and how powerful they are for a certain culture during this time period. And I think it goes hand in hand with those. And I like how, again, each episode kind of fleshes out while there's no actual streamlined story to them all. They all feel connected by the way that of spiritualness and hopefulness throughout its storylines. And I loved how this one focused on the corruptness of crystals. But in the end, there's not much to this one other than, oh, that was a cute story. I didn't primarily love this one, but I did like it quite a bit, and I still would give this one a 7 out of 10. Overall, I thought each episode drastically feels different than the last in certain departments, specifically in when it focuses in on culture and community. And I love how this episode, and in general, this entire show really built off the studios and where they are originated from. And I think the Season 2 actually drastically does that better than Season 1. Season 1 definitely felt more anime-inspired, and I loved seeing the Japan influences within that whole Season 1. I kind of wish they kind of would have just on something completely different and focused and actually done spin-offs of some of those to further out those stories but within season two i kind of have that same con i wish they would also focus on that i love that so many different studios are getting chances to focus in and do their own storytelling in star wars i think they're just held back a little bit by just being short stories and particularly some of them some of them work in the development and the runtime they get other ones i want to be a little bit more fleshed out and i think star wars is one of the coolest universes that you could do these non-canon stories and told in anime inspired worlds or maybe even tell them in canon inspired places they're just taking place in a completely different area of star wars now I, again i loved a majority of the season there's only a couple episodes that i felt were a little bit dwindled same as the season one and i think they are both on par but in the end of the day i love how this is a celebration of anime 
animation and how important animation is to movies and television itself and specifically for the Star Wars world and culture. Honestly, I cannot go as far as say how much I loved season one and season two back to back. I think they're both on par with one another. So with all that said, I'm going to give this season an A minus. The episode was amazing, but again, I'm a huge fan of animation. I can't wait to hear your guys' thoughts. Again, may the force be with you all. Share your rankings down below for which episodes was your favorite. Let me know in more details down below as well. Talk full spoilers down there as well, because by the time you're watching this, the show is probably already out. And again, thank you so much for watching this. So of course, until next time, stay classy.